for a walk. Where are we walking? I'm walking back to the porch. I went to my car. Mm. But you can record me walking because I look like I'm on the move. You do. It's it's your go go rock and roll lifestyle. I was almost gonna do this interview during a hike. That would have been awesome. Yeah, I would have been real winded, and people would have been like, "Man, you're out of shape." <laughs> I think the porch. I think the porch is 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 a solid way to go. Solid choice. Yeah. yeah. Mad chill. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, we're recording, by the way. Oh, cool. It's happening right now. Uh, wow. Yeah. I'm ready. Can you feel the difference? It feels a lot more official now. Okay, good. Before it felt like we were, you know, bullshitting off camera, but now right. we're bullshitting on camera. Yes. Now it's, now it's bullshit for posterity. Yeah, right? Mm. Forever bullshit. That's the, my forever young cover. Uh, I think you could pull that off. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad somebody has faith in my covering <laughs> abilities. <laughs> uh, let's talk about crystal spiders. All right. All right. Tell me, uh, give me the crystal spiders origin story. How did crystal spiders get together? Sure. Um, so I have a couple of other bands, the Hell No and Lightning Born, and we were kind of in a a space where Lightning Born had just finished an album and the Hell No was um, on a little bit of a, you wouldn't really call it a break, but more of a slowdown where just um, a lot of us were kind of busy with other things. And I had been wanting to learn bass for a long time. Um, I used to play guitar and had stopped playing somewhere around my mid twenties because I realized I don't actually like it, but I started playing bass and then thought it would be really fun to start jamming with some other people and maybe get a little bit better faster that way and a friend of mine posted something on Facebook that said who wants to start a fuzzed out rock and roll band and I was like well that sounds just that sounds just peachy so um we got together and we started jamming a little bit and thought hey this could actually like be a lot of fun and go somewhere and I made a Craigslist ad to suss out a good drummer, which I have had a lot of luck in the past with finding musicians on Craigslist usually, cause it's like, you can write a very general ad just about what your influence are. And you can be a little funny and then see if people like latch on to what you're saying and kind of rap talk back with you. And uh, Chad just nailed it, knocked it out of the park. I um, posted what all of my influences were and then I was like who we are like we're kind of late 20s early 30s musicians who've been in several other bands uh know the way we're on the block we've got a practice space we've got good gear you should also have good gear and a job and be like you know competent in your instrument and also you know like a driver's license and all those basic basic adult things that uh, it's really hard to be in a band with someone that doesn't have, which I think um, a lot of musicians can relate to that torment. But um, yeah, he, he was so funny and so smart. So uh, when we got together, we just immediately hit it off. He had just come out of another band. And um, yeah, it was, it was really cool. We just kind of got to blend like all of our influences from stoner metal and doom and a little bit of like hardcore a little bit of punk a little bit of like that old 70s rock sound and uh i don't know i feel for me like a little bit of new wave of british heavy metal and all, all of the the melting pot of the heavy influences that we like mm -hmm. and you had you had uh mike deloach on guitar yeah uh what happened now i'm a little uh a little confused on the timing of him leaving the band uh were you in this were you recording at that point we had just uh finished what was originally intended to be the track listing of the album and it was kind of right at the start of quarantine and um you know he he had some other band stuff that he was interested in doing and when we got to talking about 
like where we wanted to take the band next. I think um, it just didn't uh, align with kind of what he was wanting to do at the time. And uh, then quarantine happened and it was just kind of like, I think a lot of people had to evaluate what it was that they were wanting to do, uh, you know, with bands, with music, with career, with family, with whatever. And um, I think Chad and I talked about it too and just uh, thought, you know what, like, I I had a huge backlog of songs that I wanted to work on and we'd just gotten out of the studio with Mike Dean, who's a good friend of mine, um, and also my bandmate in Lightning Born, and we talked about it and uh, decided that we wanted to have Mike play guitar on the next record. So Mike Dean is going to do guitar on our upcoming record. And um, then, no at, huh? No big deal. Yeah. You, you, you know, what no. Little, oh, what Mike. Little, yeah. No big deal. No, no big deal. Uh, he's like very non, uh, non into the rock star treatments, right. which is not, great because I am them, like yes. actually physically incapable of kissing anyone's ass. So it really just like works out very well. Uh, we have a good rapport, but it's also a great opportunity for me because, um, um, the last that we added the last two songs that were on the album um fog and headhunters during quarantine and so fog actually most of that i did by myself on the computer i did the rhythm track and the bass track and the vocals and um originally to a canned drum track that i made on the computer and then trad replaced it remotely and then Mike Dean laid down like a few guitar lead accents and some other stuff and mixed it and doing it that way was really challenging. But I think a lot of people, again, during quarantine have learned, learned to uh, either push themselves or restrain themselves in ways that they might not have had any need to do before, like necessity being the mother of invention and all that. So, um, I'm actually really pleased with the result of how I've had to learn to take my songwriting and make it more of a self-recording exercise, which makes it, I think it's going to make for a really cool album that we're working on right now. The fact that I've had to stretch myself to play multiple instruments on the uh, recording software I'm using Ableton and then also be able to kind of like direct and translate where I want the song to go next to get to either something close to the original vision that I had in my head or at least something that I think people would be into listening to. <laughs> That's actually I wanted to ask you about Headhunters and Fog specifically um, at the, you know, kind of they're, they're tucked, they're tucked in the back of the record, but they, they really, both those songs really kind of stood out to me uh, as yeah, it was something I couldn't quite put my, couldn't quite put my finger on just a different kind of vibe, different spirit behind those two songs. That's super interesting to hear you talk about that they were, that they were done during quarantine like that. That's awesome. Uh, Cause yeah, it was, um, I that's like what I that said, sounds it was really like. challenging. Awesome. Yeah. That's, that's, um, yeah. And Headhunters was also very weird uh, and a challenge to me as well because even though I'd already written Fog, so I had kind of like pulled that out and sent that to, to Mike Dean and asked Ripple like, hey, we were originally supposed to turn in this record, but uh, it doesn't seem like there's any point <laughs> in turning it in right now. Can we just have another month and add these two other songs? And they were like, sure, why not? Like our pressing plan is confused anyway so yeah. like it, it, it's it probably be out in the same amount of time anyway and then um so i sent that song while trad was working on it mike pulled that headhunters drum track is actually like a drum pattern from the very end of the song the call and he like kind of massaged it and added like 
octopus drum things to the background and then he sent it to us and he's like i don't know why i just got inspired to do this and uh do you want to like put a vocal on it and at first i was really like taken aback because i was like <laughs> Uh, what do you, you want me to do what like this is a song that i did not uh envision at all or come out of my brain sieve so to speak but he sent me a door song like my wild love went riding she rode all the day and he was like yeah just do something like that i was like oh oh sure okay i'll just pull that out of my ass why not but you know so then i pulled it out of my ass and <laughs> recorded um i recorded all of those vocals at my house in my little music room and then sent them to him and he mixed it up and finished the song so worked out so okay so tell me about that experience going to writing a new album then so um what have you i had doing that? I had this like a uh, my I guess my creative energy can be a little uh like like a faucet it's like a flood or a trickle you know depending on what's going on in my life or whatever kind of inspiration I'm going through and um you know sometime in January or February it was just like crazy it was like a flood outpouring of songs I was writing like a song every other day and I ended up with like this nutty backlog of songs that, um, which really works out because now I'm doing this Crystal Spiders record and like the Lightning Born record at the same time. Um, and so pretty much as soon as we had finished Fog and gotten that on the album, like me and Trad, um, once we kind of got over that first initial like hump of quarantine, like, can we hang out? Should we hang out? Should we? what should we do? Um, once we kind of like got over that, I had um, already kind of scratched a bunch of songs on Ableton by myself that I'd been sending to him. And then we started getting together and just wrote, literally wrote it all pretty much between like the end of May and the end of August. So I think it was about three months. We just like knocked out the album and then we started uh during that time was when we kind of cemented the idea that Mike Dean was going to play guitar on it. And um, he had us come into the studio and scratch like about half of it just so he could start working on some guitar ideas in his spare time. And that in itself has actually been a really challenging uh, writing and recording process since we started doing it because since he's going off of some of the ideas, I had guitar parts that I, would put on or that I would play for him or sing to him. Some of them, we just had like bass, drums, vocals. And then I kind of said, have at man, whatever you're feeling inspired by, like do it. And then I'm sure it'll be great. And if it needs some tweaking, we'll just get together and talk about it and figure out what it needs next. So it's been a very like incremental approach that is not usual because a lot of times when you go into the studio, you'll have these songs that like you've been playing for at shows you've been touring on them you've been you know practicing them nonstop. this one it's like we wrote them in isolation we've never played them for anyone um they're kind of like finished but then even even now we're doing our what we call our pre-work so like we go to trad's house we scratch them down we pick out like if we're gonna metronome map them or if we've noticed after we've recorded it and listened to it a few times, whoop, that's a structural thing, that doesn't work. Or like, <laughs> hey, we need to um, add another like part here because that, that one is, you know, needs a little more emphasis. So that's been a very different like process than how we'd normally do it being hey we know all these songs like the back of our hand we're gonna go in the studio knock them out in two days see you later and now it's like okay we've scratched them once we've scratched all of them at least once we've reviewed them we've kind of edited them then we go in and we do it to tape in Mike's studio just me and trad doing bass and then i'll do the vocals and then lately it's been like i'll just go in there and sit with mike dean for like a entire days like I work from home so I take my laptop in there I've got my work laptop up and then 
while he is sitting there like mixing or working out his guitar parts, I'm sitting behind him. And then he'll say like, well, what do you think about this? And I'll say, oh, that's awesome. I really like that part. Like, can you just like take that all the way out? Or, you know, I was thinking of it more like this and then I'll like sing it or play it for him. And he will like kind of tweak it to his liking or say, ah, it's not really working with that amp. Let me like run it back through through this one and see if I can get this other effect on it, which has been really fun. It's like uh, a very special collaborative experience that I would never get otherwise, right? Because most of the time during regular life, he's like out on tour with COC constantly. I just kind of like, we write, we tour, we play shows. And then whenever he's around and we're around when we can get some studio time, we record. And this is like, uh, you know, I feel a little like frenetic and exhausted at times because I've been so spending so much time trying to like write and record and mix and listen and blah, 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 blah. But it's, it's because I feel like a pressure almost like I have to capitalize on this and get as much as I can before life returns to normal. And then I don't see him for like a year and a half. <laughs> well, uh, I think you've got plenty of time before life returns to normal. But yeah. I, yeah, who knows? I don't know. I, I, but I always, I think I always have a little bit of that like urgency of life, you know? Like life is so impermanent. Everything is so impermanent. It's fleeting and you, you can't take things for granted like that another day is going to look the same as the day before. So that's like, like a strike while the iron is hot kind of thing. If I see it, if I want it, I go get it. I don't give a fuck. Like, right. same about spending time with people. Don't wait. Like, call that person, you know? They might not be here tomorrow. Like, I've kind of a... Somebody accused me of being obsessed with my own mortality the other day because I constantly do think about it. I'm like, if I got smashed by a semi on the way to the grocery store tomorrow, like and I'm sitting there in a pool of blood, what am I gonna be thinking about? Am I gonna be thinking that I've done everything that I can to the best of my ability that I like try? Am I gonna be thinking about all the things that I wish that I would have done that I didn't make time for or like the people I should have called or the record I should have made or I never learned to play the bass. Like I don't wanna think about that even though I not very good at playing the bass still, but you know what? I'm just doing it. I don't give, I don't give yeah. a shit. That's, that's a great argument for learning how to play the bass. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Play that string and then play it one more time and then like press the fret and then play that at least like once. And that's a riff, whatever. <laughs> Make it sound so easy. Make it sound so easy. And yeah, no, it nice. really is. DIY or die. Oh my God. That's too punk rock for me. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm way too punk rock for life. Way too sweatpants. <laughs> you can be punk rock in sweatpants. I have some uh, motorhead sweatpants. <laughs> Just that old. Um, okay, so the uh, it's interesting you're doing Lightning Born and Crystal Spiders at the same time uh, because I wanted to talk to you about kind of the different dynamics in both bands. Of course. Uh, Lightning Born has a fuller lineup, as it were. Um, although, with if Mike's playing guitar in Crystal Spiders, it's a three-piece, so legit. Um, well, he's he's not officially in the band. I don't like. If we're lucky, maybe he'll play some shows or uh, tour no, with us or something. Right, but but he's, he's very non-committal about that. Right. But he's you know he's contributing to the writing, playing guitar, while you're also playing guitar and bass and all that. So. Um, but the different dynamic between both bands, especially going from the first Crystal Spiders record to to a second one, um, how do you see the two bands differently? Like, what what does what does one band do that the other one doesn't? It kind of thing. Uh, how well, do you, and that's how where, does your approach change? So uh, the first um, Lightning Born record, Eric Sugg had a strong like voice in the riffs and the riff writing and he's kind of like also decided to go a different direction with where he's taken his music um 
So we have a different guitar player this time around. And also I think it's gonna be kind of interesting and cool. Like Mike Dean and I having had this like Crystal Spiders writing experience, then turning attention right back to Lightning Born. Um, the songs we've written so far for the record are, so far my songs, there are a few of my songs that um, I wrote and then he's got one that we're kind of working on and then one that just kind of collaboratively like sprung out in a practice. Um, so they are all a little bit different as far as like the voice behind them. Not like the voice, yeah, but no, I know at least the like songwriting the creative, creative voice. voice. I, I, yeah, I got um, it. Yeah, yeah, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. I, try, I try to be yeah. clear. No, it's good, it's good. <laughs> um, so in that sense, like the, the songwriting voice is different. Uh, also, Doza and Trout are very different drummers, I think. Um, guitar effects, totally different. Uh, Lightning Born is way more like straight ahead, classic, like kind of throwback versus uh, Crystal Spiders uses a lot more like fuzz, distortion. Um, on the vocals, we do a lot of like octaves and doubling and like reverb and kind of like wash and we play a lot with effects and like mood i'm very into like trying to create a mood or trying to create to and a scene so to speak in a song versus lightning born is a lot more like kind of like emotion based if that makes any sense like a lot of the songs will tell a story or like try to capture like like a a zeitgeist or there my my lyrics in those are a lot more political usually and then my stuff in crystal spiders is a lot more uh i don't really yeah i'd say scenic or perhaps like a lot more metaphor and things in lightning born can have a tendency to be a little bit more literal which also makes sense with how the songs end up coming out because like i only do one vocal most of the time is a soul vocal uh we only have one guitar and so usually it'll just be like a one guitar track occasionally it'll be both a rhythm and a and a lead over there um but on crystal spiders we can kind of like play with a lot more um actually we are going to have hopefully a couple more guests on the crystal spiders album that's coming up as well to add some uh extra instrumentation I don't want to say too much about it because right. we only just kind of like decided on it this week, but um, that I'm excited about the people who have agreed to collaborate with us on it. So it'll be pretty cool. Very good. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess what I was thinking was, was kind of in terms of the, the creative voice, like you said, setting an atmosphere versus uh, political narrative. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think like uh, a lot of the classic, bands from the 70s that we all really like like okay the obvious like war pigs um i'm sorry uh, i've never heard that you've never heard that no is that a thing? i don't know how it goes is that a band war pigs war pigs is that the way the song goes? oh you know that that is familiar <laughs> thank you Good. um uh you know a, a lot of those songs were very politically minded i think <laughs> Clearly, right now, we have more to complain about politically than <laughs> perhaps we have in a long time. So this song's going to be, or this album's going to be very whiny. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, it's... <laughs> plug in. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, Finally. I hate politics. I hate politics. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's one of my new tunes. I'm so exhausted. Yes. That's... Yeah. Fuck Facebook. Dude, you just, you just made grunge. <laughs> I did it. I did it. I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm very uh, creative with my song lyrics. I don't know if you saw my my latest ode to hot dogs on my Facebook page. Wow, I'm very sorry that I missed that. Uh, you'll have to go. You'll have to go to my Facebook page and see my uh, ode to hot dogs. Make there sure to read the comments. I'm going right now. I want to go. I love a hot dog. Wow, this is wow. This is recording. I'm making this oh happen. good well i feel really bad that uh everyone on the 
the Zoom call won't be able to see my hot dog post. Mm -hmm. I, I might be able to sing you a song about a hot dog, so I'll have to look up the lyrics. Okay. I, I don't see it. Let's see. I, well, you wouldn't be able to miss it. It's a picture of me on stage that I photoshopped a hot dog onto. Well, I, okay. So, <laughs> let's... Oh, yeah. It says, makes you want a hot dog real bad. And uh, I actually hate it when oh, there you do go. this. Thanks but uh, yeah. I decided to entertain it this time. Uh, my friend said, write a song called Wiener Mouth. And I said, too easy. But uh, if you if you put this jingle to the tune of Overkill by Motorhead, <laughs> you could get it. Yeah. You're a hot hunk of meat. Got a place between my teeth. Chew you up and choke you down. Fox buns around this town. Wiener mouth. Wiener mouth. Need you when I'm down and out. Yeah. Turn your video <laughs> back on, for the love of God. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I was, I was reading the lyrics. You didn't, you didn't get to see me rock out to my Wiener song. How are you going to sing Wiener Mouth with the video off? I, well, I had to read the lyrics that I had it on my phone. I don't, I don't have any other way to do it. Wow. But, you know, uh, we can accompany this song with a photo of me <laughs> with a hot dog. Perfect. I'll just use the photos. I'm just like... That's that's my microphone yeah. face. Thank you for that. That was You're great. welcome. Um, I appreciate. I aim to please. Uh, is is Crystal Spiders going to get another permanent guitarist? I don't think so. Um, we've talked about it, and frankly, this is going to sound bad, but uh, to be honest, that was one of the reasons that I thought Crystal Spiders was going to be an awesome idea for me to begin with because I have a very like <laughs> um what would you what would you say overly productive songwriting brain and they just come out and there's so many of them sometimes that I am bummed that I don't get to use all of them um so that is why it is obnoxious that I'm in three bands but like if I wasn't I don't think that I could like I don't think that I could survive my own head. Um, so in a sense, that was why like a three piece and then now a two piece was attractive to me because I was like, oh, I don't have to try to coordinate band practices with like five people. I don't have to try to like wait on everybody to answer whether or not they can go on tour. I don't have to work around everyone else's schedule. I can just like, rah, like pull, plow full speed ahead when I'm ready to write and when I'm ready to play. And to be honest, out of everyone that I know and have worked with, like Trad, my Crystal Spiders drummer, is like probably the most uh, aligned with me in that way. And he he likes to joke; he calls us sharks because he says if we stop swimming, we'll die. Um, so like <laughs> we just have to like constantly like drive ahead um, to the point where it's like. I think it, it's exhausting or maybe frustrating for a lot of other people who's just like desires or needs or philosophies don't align with that. Like, and there's a lot of reasons people play music, you know, like some people play because they love to perform. Some people play just because it's fun for them to play and they don't care if anyone ever hears their music. Some people, you know, write in secrecy and never uh, show what they do to anybody. And um, I guess the reason, I play is like sort of half there half self therapy for me just to like get whatever crazy emotions and dreams and thoughts and madness that goes on inside my head out in some form that makes me feel like I've made something beautiful out of something uh perhaps not so beautiful. And then also because I like sharing it with other people. I like recording. I like playing shows. I like, I like it when you feel like you've kind of connected with somebody else's soul, like based on what you've made and they've listened to, or like made and you've listened to, it's like a, a way to connect the spirit, so to speak. I think, uh, I think we'll leave it there. I'm going to, I'm going to stop recording. Cool. Bye, everybody.
There you go.